Salt Note Doom Build is a beast of an app, and there's so much you can do in it, uh, especially if you're building maps in UDMF format. But because it's such a robust tool, there's so many features in it that people simply just don't realize they all exist. And because it's not the most user-friendly, intuitive kind of setup, a lot of people either don't explore what they can and can't do, or start to explore it and get overwhelmed and then just end up sticking to the basics. And that's a shame in some ways because there are some really useful tools and tricks in Ultimate Doom Builder that can save you literal hours of time over the course of your mapping journey. I'll begin by saying that there's already lots of really helpful YouTube guides out there covering all aspects of Ultimate Doom Builder. Off the top of my head, the three that I'd recommend are probably uh, Chubbs Doomer if you're very new to mapping and you just want to deep dive in the basics. Um, David X Newton for nice higher production videos, especially if you're interested in expanding your knowledge outside of UDB into things like ZScript. And BridgeBurner is really good if you've already got a grasp of the basics, but you want like either a deep dive into a conceptual explanation of some more complex architectural design, or if you want to dig into literally every shortcut available to you in Ultimate Tomb Builder. These guys are all absolutely fantastic, but the biggest issue I've found with these is that um, I often just want to quickly learn about one concept I'm struggling with or what I'm not aware of, and I end up having to sort of navigate through hour-long videos of information that I already know just to find that one nugget of wisdom to continue building my map. So I thought I'd throw my lot into the tutorials out there where I cover several important tools or aspects of UDB that I've found useful and show you how they can be used to save time without going over every little aspect of them. That way you can watch the whole thing in 15 or 20 minutes or whatever and pick up some useful knowledge, or you can skip through and find the pieces that are important to you. I may follow this with some more videos if this is helpful, so let me know in the comments if there's anything you're struggling with that you'd like covered in future. Let's jump on in and we'll have a look at what we can do. So I've just started off by making this square room and I'm going to create a pillar in the middle using the ellipse create tool. Now I've used 12 sides on this tool and the reason I've done that is because if you create ellipses or rectangles or whatever in multiples of four sides then if you're ever going to do a copy and paste or a duplicate of some kind of pillar or structure that comes off of that then whenever you're rotating the copied object it's going to snap to 15 degrees for each rotation which means that you can easily align it to any side of your ellipse. It'll become more apparent later on when we do some copying in this video. So the first tool I want to show you is the stair builder, which I don't ever use for stairs. You can use it for stairs if you want, but it's a little bit clunky. It's actually really, really helpful though to add extra borders or extra sectors that line up really nicely with any sort of architecture or line depth structure that you've got. You do have to make sure all the line depth faces are pointing in the correct direction either out, out or in, it doesn't matter, as long as they're all the same way. And then you can create these bordering sectors that you can even segment and it miters the joints really nicely so it's evenly split, which allows for some really easy sort of aligning of textures and working with architecture later on. Again, BridgeBurner does go through a lot of this in way more detail, I'd highly recommend checking that out. I'll leave the link in the description below to some of his videos. Um, very useful information to do, but it might be a little bit dry and in-depth if that architecture is not your cup of tea. So with that, I've created this bordering sector, so I can now run into here and find a useful texture to go with it. I'm going to go with this sort of support beam thing here. I think it's like a Maya support beam from 32 in 24 textures. And after I've done that, I can quickly and easily pop into visual mode and use Control a line up the cursor near the outer line depth of these and just go around and align these up nicely. Looks like a really nice simple border for this entire pillar here. Just one of those little bits of added complexity that help enhance the experience for the player. I'll make the top of this some kind of a concrete texture as well, just to, you know, make it pretty. So the next thing I want to do is create some structures off the side of this central pillar. And the way I'm going to do that is using this Smart Grid Transform option. Now this isn't a function that's automatically bound to a key or has a quick button or anything like that. You have to actually go into the tools and bind this yourself. So you can jump into the control settings in your preferences and search in the filter at the top for Grid or Smart Grid and you'll find it in here under Smart Grid Transform. I've set this to number 9 on my keyboard. I kind of wish I'd set it somewhere more convenient so in the future I'll probably change that around. I highly recommend putting it somewhere really close to where your fingers naturally are because once you start using this you'll probably never stop. It's really one of the most useful shortcuts in Ultimate Doom Builder. 
Uh, this shortcut will realign the snap grid uh, to the line def and vertex closest to where your cursor is. And it really just helps you align architecture really nicely with certain sort of line defs without ever having to deal with the standard XY grid or trying to sort of freeform draw or anything. So you can still keep that sort of mathematical kind of architectural design to your map. And you might have to readjust a few times, uh, especially if you don't have any line defs that are sort of nicely, you know, nicely sized into that sort of 16-bit multiple width kind of size. So then you might have to, you know, go to another line def uh, over on the other side of what you're working on and hit that same quick button again just to realign the grid to that other vertex. But once you play around with it a little bit, it really becomes intuitive. So all I can re recommend is just get used to it. So I've created this nice little sort of jutting out pillar structure here, and I'd like to put another one on the other side. So I'm going to grab it quickly, grab all the line defs there, hit Control C and drag it over using the rotate corner bits on the editing tool. And I'm uh, going to line it up nicely with this other side over here. As I mentioned earlier, because this ellipse has multiples of four for the sides, we can actually just uh, drag it around, find the correct angle on the grid snap, and then just paste it in. We don't have to fiddle around with it too much. I like to get really close to the, you know, one of the vertexes that I'm trying to align it with and just make sure it's really on that vertex because sometimes it can snap to something just a little bit off and that can muck things up a little bit. Cool, so now I've done that, I'm going to once again use the grid align for these small line defs along the side of these trims. These uh, sort of mitre joints that I'm going to draw in another pillar here, it's going to converge inwards a little bit. And once I've drawn that in, I'm going to select the sector and just delete it out. So it's just a solid piece of emptiness there. It just makes it a little bit less annoying to work with, I find. So there we go. Uh, we've made a nice little structure here. I'll do the same thing on the other side. Once again, aligning the grid to the line def, drawing down. I'm going to go 80 in width here, aligning to the other side, drawing down again, connecting those two vertexes and hitting the sector, hitting delete. And there we go. We'll just slap those textures on there, pull down the ceiling and we're good to go. So I've got some nice interesting looking structures coming out of this central pillar now. And so now that we've built our central pillar and these nice little structures, I want to add a way that the player can get up there. So of course this doom, so we're going to probably build some stairs. And there's a few ways to build it here. One way is the stair builder way, which I find very clunky and wouldn't recommend. You can just individually make all your, your sectors if you want to. But I'm going to use the draw grid tool in this case, which is up in the left corner here. I think the shortcut is G. And once you've grabbed that, you can pop over to the right side of Ultimate Doom Builder to these side menus. And you'll see there's a draw grid menu that's appeared. We can set the parameters for this grid tool in here. So there's a few things you can do in here. We're just going to play with the horizontal and vertical slices for now, just to get the right amount of you know, uh, sectors that we want. So in this case, I want to have a staircase with about 10 steps. So I'll just put about 10 slices in there. Sometimes it's not intuitive whether you need to change the horizontal or the vertical slices. So just choose one and give it a try. If it's wrong, just change it around to the other one. Later on, we're going to be looking at um, this slice interpolation feature, but we don't have to deal with any of that just yet. So we're going to build out this staircase. Once again, I've aligned my grid to the side of the pillar that I want the stairs to be on. And I'm just going to pull out from that corner and draw in what I want here. Now it didn't quite line up with the edge there, so I'm just going to select all these line deaths and pull it out so it's flush. There we go. Now I want to show you something else that saved me so many hours, and that's the Paint Select tool. This is another thing that isn't automatically bound, I don't believe. So you'll have to go into your control settings to find it. You can just search in the filter for Paint Select. This is a tool that lets you hold down a button and drag to select anything your cursor lands on. You can do this in 3D visual mode or 2D mode, and you can set those as separate buttons or the same button with the controls. It also allows you to pick up lots of adjacent sectors really quickly without the fuss, and it just saves you so much time. I probably use this shortcut at least as often as I use the smart grid, if not more. Highly recommend assigning it to an easy to reach key. So now that I've selected all those, I'm going to jump straight into the next handy function, which is the gradient tool. There's a few of these, and I'll show you a couple of different ways you can use them. Uh, they sit at the top of the screen, and they're a little bit out of the way, so some people don't realize they exist. But basically what they do is they can create a gradient of several different things, like floor height, ceiling height, or brightness. 
and the way that they work is they just take the value from the first sector you choose and the final sector you choose and then just average out the heights or brightnesses of every sector in between. So in this case we're doing stairs so we're going to use the floor heights gradient. So you have to make sure you select the first sector as your highest or lowest and then the last chosen sector as the opposite of that endpoint. Then just hit the button and immediately it'll just build this gradient for you. It's so useful. So in visual mode here, I'm just going to run my paint select tool, just holding down the button over the floor sectors here. Paint select is a smart shortcut and because I've started on a floor, it's going to ignore all the walls that I put my mouse over as well. So it's only going to select another floor sector or ceiling sector that I choose. Uh, very helpful and very useful to grab a bunch of stuff really quickly. So I'll just create a different texture here. These support beams will do. Then I might just do the same on the sides of this stairwell. I'll put a different texture in just to differentiate it a little bit. Uh, maybe this gothic texture here. There we go. Then I'll use a paint select tool again. Grab all the wall line depths this time and then just paste in that same texture. I know that they're not beautifully aligned or anything like that, but this is just a quick tutorial, so I'll just leave it as is. So that's a nice way to quickly make some stairs. Let's have a look at the brightness gradient tool. So on these pillars over here, we want to have a light sort of shooting out from the inner pillar, heading towards the outer pillar. And we want to adjust the lighting so that it's more bright towards the center and darker as we head out towards the outer pillar. So I've used the smart grid again to align our grid and I'll quickly use the grid creation tool to build a set of sectors out from this pillar. I'll pick a light texture to add in here and I'll build the same grid for the other side as well. I'll also add a more appropriate ceiling texture in here while I'm at it. So the outermost sector I'm going to darken down to the final level that I want using the control mouse wheel shortcut. I'll set this to 128. And then the innermost one which is up next to the light here I'm going to bump that all the way up to 256 max brightness. And once I've done that jump back into 2D mode I'll select all of these sectors, hit the gradient brightness tool and voila! Immediately we've created this nice little gradient lighting that makes it look really smooth, averages out all the lighting in between. It does just look a little bit weird because the sector beside it is just one brightness, but this is just for educational purposes, so we'll leave that as is. Next thing we'll do is we'll have a look at the ceiling gradient tool, and that's very much the same as the floor one. We're going to preset a lowest ceiling height out here, and then the highest we'll leave up the top there. Select them all with our paint select and hit the make ceiling heights button. And there we've got it. Quickly align some textures. We'll also once again use that paint select tool to quickly grab all those undefined textures without grabbing the ceiling. And we'll just plonk another texture in there, maybe some kind of support texture. That'll do. So there's another sort of gradient adjacent tool that we can use to create some even more interesting things. That's the arch tool. So it's a little bit more obscure and you'll need to have a bit of knowledge with the slope function as well to sort of uh, work with this. I'm not going to cover the slope function in here, but I can do another video on it if, if people find it necessary. Or again, Bridge Burner's tutorials cover slopes in great depth. He uh, makes great use of them for all of his architecture. So I'm going to assume that you, uh, you know the slope tool for this. So we're going to use the arch tool and I believe it's not bounded by default in Ultimate Doom Builder settings either. So you'll have to go into the control settings, search for arch, find the arch tool and bind it to something. I bind mine to control W. So the way that it works is you select the boundaries of where you want your arch to be using the slope tool line depth selection. So in this case, I'll choose the ceiling closest to the light here on this pillar and then the ceiling closest to the outer pillar on this section. And I select the actual sectors as well. I don't think you need to, but it just helps me sort of visualize what I'm doing. So now that I've done that, I'm going to hit the Control W shortcut and immediately it's going to create an arch. Now it's not quite the arch that we want. As you can see, it juts up into the roof, but we have a little control panel that's popped up and we can use that to adjust our settings. So in this case, I'm going to choose that rightmost button on this panel, which is going to adjust it. So it's just an arch descending to the right. Now there's a few other things you can do in here. I'm actually going to adjust the scale here as well, just to about 60%, so it doesn't go all the way down into the floor. 
you can change things like you know, direction and you can invert it to make it sort of jut out instead of in if you want to. Recommend fully playing around with it and seeing what it's capable of or checking out those uh, tutorials by Bridgeburner on this as well. So like the other gradient tools, it just takes the first area and the last and sort of just interpolates a series of increasing slopes along the sectors to smooth out into a nice shape. And that looks pretty cool, but we can actually do a little bit better and I'll show you how, but to do that, I'm gonna create a new pillar first. Once again, gonna copy all the sectors and line depths over here, use the edit tool to rotate it and paste it back onto another side depth over here. And we'll just tidy it up a little bit quickly re-add any textures that were lost with the copy. I'm actually going to get rid of that current ceiling gradient and just draw in something else here. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use this uh, draw grid tool again, but this time we're going to look into the slice spacing interpolation and we're going to choose the option in here, ease out in sign. Sometimes you might want to use in out, sometimes out in. It's easiest just to choose one and see what happens. And then if that's the wrong one, just choose the other. Again, this is sort of like a gradient style tool as well. It's going to create sort of an ever decreasing width set of sectors up until the end where it becomes very, very tiny. And what this helps achieve is it's going to make the arch that we uh, put on this area look a lot smoother because it's going to make the side of it look like it's a lot less sort of blocky. So same as before, we're going to create an arch up here and we're going to choose each of these side depths and use the tool, Control W in my case, to bring it down. And now if you have a look at this arch here compared to the arch that we made earlier, you can see there's sort of a like jagged angles at each point on the first one. However, on the new one where the angles are sharper and the sectors are a lot skinnier, it's not as apparent that it's made of straight slopes, it looks a lot smoother. So I'll just quickly rebuild that again on the other side of here and I might actually move it to another area just so it's consistent with our nicer design. We'll just jump up into the map really quickly and I'll pop down a player start. We'll load it up and we can have a little look around here. And yeah, it looks pretty good. Now the only other thing I might do is I might just change this texture on the side of these um, sort of arched pillars so it flows down from the arched sectors a little bit nicer. Getting the textures to behave perfectly on arches can be a little bit of a nightmare sometimes, so you just sort of have to make do with the best that you can. But regardless, that's everything I wanted to showcase in this video. We've taken a look at the grid align keybind, the stair builder tool for bordering and details, the paint select keybind, and the various gradient tools for ceiling and floor height and brightness, as well as more obscure things like the arch tool and the sign interpolation option for the grid drawing tool. And with these, we've made an interesting little raised pillar section. So there's a million other things you can do to save time and create some interesting effects inside Ultimate Doom Builder. And I might make some future videos if people find this one helpful, covering some more tricks. But I'll be guided by the viewers, so let me know if there's anything in particular you want to learn or see covered. I'm by no means an expert on all of this stuff. I have sort of, you know, an intermediate knowledge of a lot of things here, I think. Um, but the way that I learn best is by having a project to work on and that problem that I need to solve. So if people have problems they need solving, I'm happy to at least attempt. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps.